Hey everyone, welcome to episode uh, 62 of the Star Wars podcast. My name is Christopher. My name's Patrick. And I'm Lex. And uh yeah, we got we got some stuff to talk about. How but uh how was uh how was your week? How was the week for you guys? Pretty exciting. It was a very exciting week Funko Pop wise, but a very busy just week overall, I think. I yeah, I was busy with work and I think with some of the excitement we got this week with the pops, some pre-order, being able to pre-order some of those pops that were just got announced, seeing Mm -hmm. um, Tales of the Empire trailer drop like unexpectedly, like about two days ago, it was a Thursday. Like some stuff just blew my mind away. Like that was just, we've been talking about, we've said on on our show here, we'd love to see a Tales of the Sith. So Tales of the Empire is pretty much the same thing in my opinion when when you yeah. see what you, on that storyboard that they they showed us in the trailer um that was gorgeous so i'm really really excited i mean it's nice that star wars fans are united and excited about something together right like yeah i didn't hear much like lex and i you and i are kind of kind of scratch our heads wondering why there's so much backlash on acolyte trailer but the, i didn't hear anything bad at all about tales of the empire so yeah and it opens up um, some other possibilities. Like they can do tales of the bounty hunters. They could do tales of whoever, right? There Pretty was a Mexico post band. I saw earlier. Yeah, I saw a post it, on like, Facebook too. I saw that too, Lex. That's amazing. Like tales of, yeah. tales of the Empire, tales of the New Republic, tales of the First Order. Yeah, I was like, whoa. But yeah, tales I mean, we've been saying for a while. Android. <laughs> Tales yeah. of the Sith would be amazing, but right. I think this is pretty much that. So it is that right? Yeah. It looks it. But they they could do a separate story of just like Darth Maul and whoever, and call it to Tales of the Sith, right? Oh, I'm sure they could. Right? We'll, so I'm sure we'll get there at some point. Hey, Niels, Niels in the the chat, Rolando as well. Said so sup. sup. Hey guys, Rolando. Jason. Jason says hey, hi. Hey, Jason. And Yossi. 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 Yeah. There it Thanks is. for coming that's in. Yeah, that's, a, the that's the one. Yeah. Tales of the Inquisitor. Great. Tale of the Lots Wookie. Of stuff. The Huts. Great. Like, yeah. I, the Millennium I mean, not, not, not all of them are, some of them are kind of dumb, but. Yeah, but. I mean, some Tales of, them, of the Yeah, Holiday. a lot of the. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, lots to talk about on this episode. Yeah. It was finally, I mean, how many weeks have we gone? Two or three weeks where we said it's been quiet. Yes. Like, something's yes, bound to happen. And then and stuff. Did. I didn't even think we could keep up on our own individual channels, like trying no. to do breaking news. It was bang, because they did the, the limited piece Darth Vader that's in that kind of uh, Funko yeah. kind of the velvet looking tin. Yeah. And then, I was, uh, so I thought that was the announcer for that. I was like, yeah. okay, I'm not a huge fan of that one. It's the old school, blah, blah, blah. And then, bam! Then they hit you with, you know... Yeah, the big announcement there, which we'll get into in a moment. Yeah. And then the next day, bam! They dropped in our lap the retro. Like, yeah, all things that we were kind of aware from, from that Scarlet Joker and other disc trackers and everything, kind of following their pages and their um, their possible rumors and leaks. So, I mean, we've been reporting and right on the money with all that stuff. Um, To see them come to fruition, I was pretty, pretty excited about. Yeah, okay. yeah. So lots to talk about, and we do. Uh, we did have Bad Batch, two episodes of the Bad Batch that were probably the best ones yet, I think. Yeah, um, awesome. But we uh, we will be chatting with our special guest here, uh, a guest that we've had on the the channel before, and I didn't realize this, Patrick. It was before we had Lex join our our ranks. It was. As, as it, a was pop it was cast. one of our earlier Co-host. ones. Yeah, and I I always um, like technically we've had him on three times because the first time. We had this. Yeah, guest that's, on. True. that's true. That's so <laughs> true. We were just amateurs back then. Nice enough to like, give us a second chance to get him on. Yeah, so. yeah. And now, and now he's coming back for uh, some. Uh, he must be a, a, a sucker for punishment or something. So, but a uh, fellow Canadian and and a great uh, Funko Channel host, store, uh, company owner, uh, businessman, Canadian businessman, uh, Fish from hey. K Dog and Fish. Hey, hey Fish. Hey. Welcome. Thanks for having yeah. me. Yeah. Good good to have you back on for uh, a third time, uh, technically. So, like Patrick you know was saying. Technical difficulties happen. It's fine. Yeah. We made it work. Yes, yeah, we made it work. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah so how, how was your week? Like, how was your week as far as uh, all uh, these reveals busy. and stuff? Yeah. Busy. Yeah. Definitely a lot to talk about. Um, yeah. I'm super excited about the 25th anniversary Phantom Menace Pops. I, right. The, fun s- story. Um, so 1999, it came out. Uh, it was in May. And I was working uh, radio in winnipeg uh which for you americans is i don't know what the equivalent would be it's really bad winnipeg's not cool yeah winnipeg it's, is, winnipeg. it's worse in edmonton so is it like winnipeg and winter, winter, winter 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 like eh, it's cold winnipeg it's and edmonton are, are yeah pretty yeah pretty yeah we call uh, you winter peg <laughs> winter peg and i was yeah. uh working a radio job and I was, as a huge Star Wars, lifetime Star Wars fan, I was super pumped about the prequels. I'd seen trailer for Phantom Menace. This is pre, like the internet was only five years old. There was no, you couldn't buy your tickets online. You couldn't, uh, there was no social media. <laughs> there was nothing. Yeah. So there were people camped out at the, Winnipeg had at that time only one giant, uh, theater, uh, and there were people camped out for. I was, weeks. I was gonna say for a week at least, week, right? Two weeks. So this this premiere uh, was a few days before the um, the media premiere was a few days before the opening weekend. I think it was on a Wednesday. Anyway, we show up, and there are people who have been there for weeks, and they're camped out, and the news was there showing a video of them and uh doing interviews with the person who is first in line and then a and w which is a canadian <laughs> burger <laughs> and w root beer right yeah a and w yeah. root beer yeah. and a yeah. very famous chain in canada uh uh they hello mikey warburton uh yeah. they mikey, they had yeah. brought food for everybody in line uh as a promotion because they knew the news was going to be there anyway so we go up to the a and w people and i brought a buddy with me and we're right in front of the dude who's first in line and we grab a burger and we're eating the burger and i'm like he's like you guys excited i'm like yeah we're excited and uh we finished our burgers and he's like we started walking towards a theater he's like what are you doing like aren't you gonna go uh to the back of the line like it's opening in two days and we said no we're gonna go watch it right now we're literally gonna see it <laughs> and uh he was so mad that we had ate their burgers that we <laughs> people who were camping out and you just, just walked furious. in the immediate <laughs> furious and i'm like well we're gonna actually gonna we'll go watch it right now we'll let you know how it is <laughs> that was hysterical been camped out for two weeks oh so, man that's great i absolutely <laughs> loved and i know a lot of people will not be uh complimentary about most of the prequels even phantom menace with jar jar and all that but i can't tell you how pumped old people were who in who were og trilogy fans to have new star wars content now people take that for granted they do they add 1999 I'm talking like I was born the year before Star Wars. So when I was growing up uh, as a kid in the 80s, it was massive. And to become that kind of a fan and then not have new content for 20 years, people were like pumped. Even Lucas re-released 20th anniversary in 97 or the original trilogy with the yeah, people edits, the upcoming stuff with yeah. the crap edits into theaters to pump people up again and and, and that's that, when i that's when i became a fan was 97 oh, that's that's what so that was my cool. era that was such <clears> a so. great idea such a marketing yeah. genius move to put the ogs back in theaters before the prequels were coming out and it was so pumped. So I actually to, so excited about the Phantom Menace um, new wave because they're doing some things that we haven't seen before. So that I'm really yeah. excited. About. Yeah. 
So be- before we dive into that stuff, do you uh, do you want to let people know where they can find you if they if they don't know who you are? Because you're kind of a celebrity yes. in the uh, in the Funko Pop world, I think. We're trying, like we're we're really lucky that I think that the Funko world uh, needed people who are going to tell it like it was. Yeah, and we became more of a a grown up adult content like funny honest we're gonna say You're brutally honest jokes. i love that about you guys we don't hold back like this is what we love we're clearly collectors this is my house this is not the studio the youtube <laughs> studio this is my house so yeah we're collectors we're fans we love everything about pop culture and we love been collecting funko for a long time so we tell it like it is and some people will comment on the videos and be like oh you're just being negative and i'm like i love funko yeah i want them to do something right so like when they did the april fools nfts those are cool I they killed it that. yeah I you did a limited you. release you didn't do seventy thousand. you did fifteen thousand packs they sold out right away for redeemables they were cool we praised them for that we did a whole video about it mm-hmm. so yeah it bothers me when people say that because we have so many positive, we love Funko content as well. You're just coming in at a time where we're bitching about something. That they did that, was, were yeah. they commenting on the Freddy Funko with the Coke and Sprite versions? Is that what it was? <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty that bad. Was, right. so, that a couple was pretty of videos bad. ago, I can't remember what. It might have been about the first project, Fred. And the fact that they're $295 USD is garbage freaking crazy crazy yeah, amount of money it's they didn't not even give it the attention that you had mentioned of um like when they did the star wars the futuristic uh um uh, artist series yeah and they did not even like that it was just like they just slapped a a shrink wrap label over to some sort like i honestly oh. wonder is it a shrink wrap <laughs> label and it's if you cut it it'll be white underneath it like or do they actually take yeah. the time to diet it, paint it whatever uh, it's just, yeah, I agree with what you guys are saying. Lazy. It's, Lazy. it's nice that you guys are brutally honest. I yeah. think it's, yeah, we're, we're pretty much the same way. Me, Lex, and Christopher, like we, we just say, we speak our mind. Like we yeah. are avid collectors. We're huge fans. And if you, I think to be, to connect to your audience, you, you have to be genuine. You have to be real. Yeah. We're, we don't like yeah. everything. Yeah. And we say that. And, uh, you know, our hopes is, maybe someone from Funko listens and pays attention because I think <laughs> maybe, right? Maybe you're adorable, <laughs> yeah. no. but it would be nice to kind of get an idea of how things are. Like no. I just went and bought yeah. bookshelves and I read the guy I bought my bookshelves is the lead designer for black series for star Wars. And so I asked him, I said, I would really, really love to know, what that conversation in the boardroom when you're deciding what characters you're going to do next, because I honestly want to know, I'm very curious. Are there people that are working that are major fans in there? Like, what is that? And so I kind of sometimes wonder much like you and K dog, what is going on in the boardroom when they talk about, okay, these are the focus. We're going to release this, this quarter. What does that conversation start like? And how, how is that? Because, Sometimes I I think you guys are right. Like they they nail it, and then other times it's like a complete flop. And then when they nail something, and the one thing I always like was when uh, Big Dog's always like pour some gasoline yeah. on it. Pour some gas. Yeah. So that's what they I do. Always laugh when he does that. But yeah. I feel like you're right. Yeah. Like Project Fred is a, a great example. Something that just came out was a success, and then boom, you didn't wait a month before you put gasoline on it. I absolutely. Yeah. It drives me batty that not only did they do these lazy artist series for this wave two, but they decided to do two figures instead of one. And the completists who were like 295 was a lot to ask of somebody. And then you do this lazy artist rap, and then you're asking people to buy two of them for six hundred dollars. Oh, yeah, you're crazy. That is a lot. They should have done, I said this in the video, they should have done uh, um, the Funko, uh, like the the Project Fred figure that they did for Bob's Big Boy. And he was wearing like uh, Coke merch 
like an old timey soda jerk, yeah, like, like the Santa holding a coke holding bottle, a, holding the bottle, wearing a coke paper hat and smock and co coke Coca Cola gear. That and you just do the one. I'm go for it. The Project Fred, the first one, sold out. Yeah, we didn't care for it. We thought the price <clears throat> is insane, but it worked. So because it worked, you don't just pour the gas on and be yeah. like, let's double, let's double down. <laughs> Mikey obviously yeah. watches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna watch him. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Funny. Um, <laughs> before we jump into our pop report, though, what what did you think of the uh, Star Wars NFTs? Because they came out ah, a couple weeks ago. Oh, so we we did a show about that too. I I loved the Luke upside down, and I loved the uh, Han Solo getting unfrozen from carbonite. Yeah, the other ones were a little lazy. The Leia glow poster, New Hope poster, was pretty sweet. But what I what I didn't appreciate is that they tried to do the most NFT packs that they've ever made before. So the redeemables were way less of a chance. We actually struck out. We didn't get any. Yeah. And on top of that, they tried to do deluxe. I'll tell you this as somebody who's been getting the NFTs for the store and stuff, the drop IO who ships out these for Funko has just learned how to package them properly. Like literally a month ago. So now you're going to give these idiots pop deluxes as they try and figure out how to pack they're gonna come damage we're gonna see this like they won't redeem until july and then they won't ship until freaking october but once people have these in their hands will they arrive in good condition that's i'm i don't i'm hoping so i'm hope i gotta agree i, mean, I hope so for real? patrick's sake but I did. Yeah. I, I, and I, you know what? I happened to save a premium and a standard pack and recorded it so I can use it for, you know, my, my video. Yeah. And just by chance, it, the one that I got the grail, I happened to record it. So I was like, oh my gosh. Nice. So I, I didn't think I was going to get anything. And I felt much like my colleagues here. It, it wasn't that exciting. Like at first, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll let's dip my feet into the water. Yeah. But if I didn't get the grail and I end up getting nothing, like not even a legendary after what three, three premiums anything. and two standard, like really nothing. I bought four yeah. premium. Four. <clears throat> yeah. Brutal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I just feel like they shouldn't have done deluxes. They should have done less packs. Transformers sold out two weeks before that, and they did 40,000 packs and yeah. really cool redeemables. I think that. They were shooting for the moon for whatever it was, seventy thousand packs or something like that. It was it was stupid. It was Pretty too high. Much. Yeah, like sixty five. Yeah. I think sixty five. I think it was sixty five. And it was like insane because there was thousands that went unsold too. Thou, thou they burnt thirty one thousand. I think Half the legendaries yeah. are probably twenty four. They they burnt twenty four thousand. But I'm just like that's such a waste. The other thing that we've talked about before uh k dog and i was that they should uh they already have people working on these digital nft cards you know which redeemables you're going to do get them into production you put the numbers on the sticker get these going and so that when you drop the nft and that's what you're planning them out six months in advance you drop the nft the next day it's it's already been closed that evening the next day you're allowed to redeem, and then they ship within a week or two. This that whole would be much better. I mean, be a good that way of nice. doing it. Yeah, but waiting like I have to set reminders on my iPhone. Hey, remind me in July to, <laughs> to redeem, redeem this, and yeah. then when it's redeemed, it's not shipped. It's nope. just redeemed. So, yeah. like recently, the Power Rangers were up for redemption a while back. And I was like, oh, yeah, I redeemed it. Why haven't it shipped? I go into my Drop.io account, and it says still processing. So I I, I redeemed, and I got the wickedest one. I got the, the White Ranger, nice. uh, which is like, nice. that was a good one. And I'm like, why hasn't this shipped yet? And uh, just absolutely like the things that they. I don't, don't get it. 
I think don't you your, your people forget. They probably dude. haven't made the physical yeah. pop yet. That's that's what I that's exactly what I think. Yeah, and I think that that's where you're screwing people over. Yeah, you got and, a uh, concept, get it into production, drop the NFT, redeem, ship. People would, I think, you'd drive more of a demand. The fact that I, you, I think, yeah, because when you're waiting, like just like waiting for a wave of something point. when a new show releases and you wait a year later to drop a Funko line for it, yeah. you lost all the hype. We say that all the time here, yeah. you know, when they did it for Mando yeah. or any of the shows. When you, 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 Ahsoka, I think, was the closest to the sh- series that they dropped another wave and that we've seen in years that was kind of like co- it's been a, it's been a yeah, while. it was just coherent with everything going on. So I don't know. It's weird. It's yeah, really weird. I agree. <coughs> Other than that, like I, yeah. I did, I thought that if they had, and there, I've noticed a growing trend when something is a deluxe, it could fit in a four inch box. So yeah, I just got <laughs> a shipment from Funko and it had the brand new Godzilla X Kong Scar King on Throne Deluxe Funko Shop exclusive. Hmm. And I unbox it and I'm like, <clears throat> this big, this is the box. Like yeah. you, you yeah, this is so you could charge 30 bucks for it. You call it deluxe. So I'm actually curious when these do get shipped, if they're indeed deluxe NFT redeemable figures. Or if they're the box is deluxe and the figure is four inch, because that's mm. BS. Am I yeah, like swearing you guys? Show? You guys, I swear all the time. You guys, you guys swear on this show. I do. Try to keep I, it family friendly. I try, but I try, I try, but but I, how about no f words? Yes. No f word. Yeah. Like, if I say s word, or it's it's okay. I mean that that slips. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All yeah. Right. I just want to make sure. I don't want to offend anyone. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we got a lot to talk about because we had a uh, quite a bit of news this week. So let's uh, <clears throat> let's jump into our pop report. Okay. No need to report that to him until we have something to report. Yeah. So first up, the news this week yeah. started with, I guess Funko Classics are what they called, and it's yes. like metal tin. There's a pop inside with some other goodies. I myself will not be purchasing this. I will not, but I've seen these all on actually K Dog's Fish Show. And I think they had like the Batman or Captain America yeah. one. Um, so I, and I, I don't know, just he, just seeing how the, the box doesn't quite stay open and stuff like that. I have a, a Darth Vader, like, you know, black box. I didn't get the original blue box, but it's obviously a remake. Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just not feeling this one. I mean, the slight difference in the, tone of the eyes isn't really grabbing me and you know a, a card a coin and an enamel pin it's it's just kind of lacking but i get the idea of classic because that it, it's supposed to kind of be like the original lines that's the original like, mold yeah yeah but i'm like eh. yeah and what does the I mean, year i, I like mean? it the what sorry the year which like at the bottom it says like so it says star wars pop year two hmm. okay so I was actually wondering about this because the tins were all last year for the 25th anniversary and they were all 25,000 piece. So when I saw this coming out in 2024 with the 10,000 piece um, wrap on the, on the tin, I was like, why are they doing? And I didn't see the writing on the stand mostly because I have poor eyesight. So thank you Lex for pointing that out. Uh, but that that to me means that this is going to be year two of Funko anniversary releases. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. So okay. Last year was the first year doing all those tins, and they were all year one releases. So that that like the first year Funko existed, they didn't do Star Wars. That's what they're doing. Right. I see. Yeah. I yeah. See. All right. Yeah. I like it though. I. Like I, I'm probably not going to get it, but I, I do feel like the the tin, the uh, the coin, the 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 what is it? Is that a pin or something? It's a panel pin. It's like an, uh, it's not Mammal actually pin? a pin. It's like um, or is it a pin? Yeah, it's a pin. It's a pin. Yeah, I I feel like that's enough to get people to buy it. I I just don't like the the eyes on it, so I'm I'm going to pass on it. But I, I do like what they're doing with it. 
trying to get people to get like the OG, the first Star Wars Funko Pop again, right? Because yeah, the 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 blue box now goes for who knows how much, right? So I mean, as a Vader, um, it's not like too much. I don't my know. favorite Vader pop of all time is actually the diecast. Really. The non chase, the chase die cast that we did a whole show about that. That is just absolutely oh, where they don't just don't paint it hot garbage. Yeah, but the yeah. the fact that Vader is like metallic and heavy and black with it's just it's I got it over here and he's I have doing mine right here. He's doing the cho uh, choke force. It right. is it is yeah. cool as shit. It is really cool. I do like the yeah. die cast. I think I like it more than this. I like the idea of it, but I think I just oh, don't like the go. look of it. Like that yeah. just that is just absolute beautiful. Yeah, that's fire. That's a yeah. beautiful it pop. is nice. I, I don't know why they, they do the chase where they make the chase oh, like, just the brush metal. So lazy. <laughs> it's so yeah. lazy. I don't want the chases. I if I I want the, the I want the regular, yeah. Bad. You don't want that. You want chases to be exciting. Yeah. yeah. Do a different right. paint job. Jason said, sorry, I will not cop this. Yeah. I will yeah, cop I get it. this. I will cop this. I will cop, I will cop this. Sorry, but I will cop this. I'm yeah, sorry, I'm I read that on this one. Okay. A hard pass. I mean, there's stuff out there for everyone. It is It is cool. It is cool. Like, like I said, it's cool that they're doing it. It's not for me, though. I don't, I just, I hate the eyes like that. See for me, I don't mind the sculpt as much. I just don't like the even the base. I just don't like that base. It just, I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of like sitting on kind of the building or something. Like, I don't know. I'm just not a fan of it. I mean, they do so many other sculpts, and there's so many other things they're going to be doing. If I had to put my money towards something, it sure isn't going to be this. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. probably. I'm going to get in a couple for the store, and I'm I I have so much Star Wars stuff. I probably will pass on this myself. It just, I, and I, yeah, I, they have not perfected it where if you, if you did a really good job with these and the, the vault door was able to just stay open so you could display everything beautifully in the package. Because the, the boxes that those come in, that's not in this picture, are beautiful. They have like, um, met uh, like like on the outside. metal thing with rivets, like around the vault door. It's a mm. beautiful box. So if you were to open up that tin and you had that box for the Vader and everything sort of displayed and shown and you could actually just open that tin up and display it like that, but the yeah. tin doors don't really stay open. That's that's the issue. Mm. Mm. Tough. Not cool. Yeah, there's other, yeah. Th there's other things that are coming down the pipeline I'd rather throw my money at than this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Definitely. absolutely. So I guess segueing into that then, four days ago, we got this coming soon, which is actually of an updated list. So there are some names on there that they had posted from a couple months ago. I think it was like February 20th, but there were some new names on there. And we actually got every single one of these pops that were on the list officially announced, which is yeah. very exciting. So one of the first ones that we got is this Retro Jar Jar. With blue balls. With blue balls. With the blue balls. Yeah. The Booma balls. I like the retro series. I know Chris isn't a big fan of them. Yeah. See, I, I'm, I'm not I a big fan. Like, I do like the color. I like the coloring on on Jar Jar. He's probably the best one out of this series, I think. Really? I think yeah. the color saturation think, on him draws you to him, but yeah. I don't think yeah. he's the best out of the series. I think he's the I out do. of the four, I think he's the worst. Really? I just, I, I, I love the colors on this one. Better. I love the colors on this one. I do like the colors because I think it, it very much to me has a gradient of a comic book with the way they've yeah. done it. I love, I like that look. I really do. I, and now I feel like I have to be a completionist for a retro series. And as much as <laughs> I was going to pass on Jar Jar, um, on, in the other line, this one I I I, I, already, I definitely already pre-ordered this one. This is definitely pre-ordered. Yeah, I think I want all the retro ones, but I just think that the 
these are like other than the coloring and like the scheme of it it's the exact same one as this other one it's 100 percent the same yeah, yeah. like oh, there's of course no, well, actually no all of them are lex that's the one thing i noted is so jar well, jar and Padme. one are the same as the normal release and the Amidala and Maul are the same from the original, original. Oh, like Blue Bond. Yeah. Back in the, yeah. In the Blue <clears throat> They're just done retro style. But that, so that's that, how all that, the retro that, ones are done Blue anyways. Blue What's that? That's, that's, all, the re that's all, retro. all the retro ones are done anyways. Because the retro Obi-Wan is purple. It's the same sculpt as the uh, Smuggler's Bounty Obi-Wan. The same pose. Is it? Yeah. Uh, I think it's, I think it's a little different. bit different. Like his hair, I think, is different. Yeah, that's a hundred percent right. The hair is different. Now, now I gotta find him. But either way, yeah. I think this is really cool that Funko is doing something like this because we've never gotten yeah. this, like, or like a style of this. So I think that Funko is really kind of venturing out and doing like pretty cool sculpts. Like, I mean, we got Luke upside down. Now we've got Jar Jar and his balls. I mean, aside from the <laughs> jokes and stuff, but like, I think yeah. that's pretty cool. And it's this being packaged great, in a it, regular box. Yeah, it's great because it, it's straight out of the movie where he's swinging the blue the boomer ball around trying to hit the the battle yeah. droid, right? So it's yeah, I love it when they do this. Like, it's just like classic Jar Jar. Like he looks clumsy, he looks funny. Like yeah, I don't know. I just I love it. I think right, I'm looking cool. at both of them, Lex. So so here is the Smuggler's Bounty Obi Wan, <laughs> and it is quite different. From that one, notice they hand yeah. more in front, less on the side, and the head sculpt is quite a bit different. But I, I agree. At first, I thought you nailed it being the same, but they, this is actually slightly different between these two. Yeah, I think the old Obi One's really the only one that's like super different sculpt wise because the Palpatine's the same, R 2s the same, Chewbacca's the same. I'm sure Vader's the same. Probably yeah. the stormtrooper too. I can't even Vader's see the chokehold one that was. I can't remember what that was from. That was, yeah. Not the road one. Road one. Yeah, they have. Yeah, yeah. I, really yeah. Like, I like that retro series. I don't know. I love it. I mean, I love it. The mall looks just dope got the too. Cody pop. There nice. you go. Gotta go fast. That so you just got the go the Cody pop. That's awesome. Nice. Gotta go fast. That's a great pop to have in the collection. Yeah. But this looks know. great. This looks yeah. great. Chris, you're a mall fan. What are your thoughts on it? You I'm gonna pass on it. I'm skipping this one. I just really? I, I, I don't like the retro ones. I like it. I think it looks crazy. Oh, I mean, his lightsaber. I have like a whole section of my room like to retro. retro. <laughs> I, I just love the retro. Like yeah. I even got that nice 60 by 20 glass wall art uh from the comic book, which the Lay it, which I, it was funny because I didn't realize the I had the t-shirt underneath. The t-shirt and is and the pop are designed at, right after the comic book and the art that my wife got me. So I was like, oh, that's so cool. So I, I really like this series and I've always had. It's just it's just unique. It is. But I think okay. aside from Maul, I really do like the princess. I mean the Queen Amidala. Yeah. I don't know why I was about to say Princess Leia. But I'm glad that we got yeah. one, and it's kind of like the blue box, but more, re you know, the retro take on it, because I've yeah. been dying to get one of those. I didn't go out and recently get a fake one to add to my collection, so uh, this will no have to do. This will have to do. I don't, I just think the retro, like, flares, like, aside, like, I don't like when they change the colors completely, but when they add, like, the subtle accents to it, I think it just makes the pop pop more. One of my favorite images is the Obi Wan, and I don't know why, because he's got a purple lightsaber and a purple robe, but yeah. it is kind of reminiscent of the comic, you know, the cut with the colors that he did straight through. But it's, I don't know what it is. I just love that. I just really love those pops. They're just, there's something about it. It's, it, I think they're 10 times better than that Futuriza, that artist guy that does, like, you know, let me put the Rebel logo 50 million times all over the pop in different colors, like, way better than that. So, oh, like, the art series, know. yeah, yeah. I'm not a fan of those, really. Um, these I, are like so I, I don't hate cooler. these. I, I'm just it's, it's not the style that I collect. I so. I, I like them even yeah. better than black lights. Like yes, I know black lights are a big seller, but I just think these are still cooler because they still maintain yeah. 
the character. Like where when you go black light, the colors are all tweaked and off and they don't quite look like the same. So I actually don't, know. don't even think there is one single black light Star Wars pop. No, Star I don't Wars? think they no, have I don't think so. Oh. Not yet. I think they should yet. stick without Not yet. But you know what? As soon as they, if they sold a sold it and it went popular, like you say, gasoline. Yes. Like the, whole, the whole wave of it. Pour it on. Yep. Well, uh, we'll pre order with Target. Yeah, I do really like the retro series. I've had all of them. Um, first wave, second wave, and then this one will be really cool. I'm actually the most excited um, for the Darth Maul on speeder. That's something we've never oh, seen. Oh, the blood fin? Yes. So, yeah. like, we know See, that, that one fins. I like. That's just awesome. Yeah. Well, that, that's one of the ones, like you were saying, it, it looks like it could fit in a regular si a smaller box. So, for sure. Absolutely. Like so I saw space. an image of it, the box. You know how the Darth Vader laying down is on the side? I think it's in the yeah. same box as this. At least from oh, the image that I saw, okay. it looks like it's that like small rectangular box. So ah, so. interesting. But interesting. I might be tripping. Because they did that with the flocked Elmo target con. And it pissed yeah. everyone off. Like you and somebody actually uh Wasatch pop uh on YouTube, he took it out of the box and he had the original four inch Elmo box and he put it in there and it fit. Like you're Ooh. it was stupid to do the, the that tough pop to say. Box. Like I don't know, it to me it looked like that rectangular type one. Yeah, you could be sideways. right. Like it doesn't look like that huge box. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. The so. lying down Vader size box. Yeah, or the yeah, all the maybe. box or the Grogu, Grogu and yeah, yeah, yeah the Grogu yeah. and Pram. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. It still it still seems a little big. I but mean, even... he's on a like a speeder. It's like a pop ride, so I would expect it to be a little bit bigger. I, a little bit bigger. I'd like it to be a little bit bigger. Yeah, you know, he almost yeah. kind of looks the same size as like the Watto and the Obi. Yeah, Watto now seeing it too, like that though. scale it's to scale, it does look a lot smaller. It's kind of they it's are it underwhelming. Surprise me though, they are doing that. They're putting four inch pops in Pop Ride and Pop Deluxe boxes. So I hmm. hope not. I hope it's a regular size. Yeah, it does look very small. But I, I'm definitely getting this one for sure. I, I'm definitely getting it. Gotta have it. Yeah. Yeah, I want that one. I also I already, I already have this pre-ordered. This is definitely locked in, pre-ordered. Nice. I think the only one I couldn't get was Amidala on the throne. Yeah, I couldn't get her either, and that's the one that I really want. The one I really want. That's... I already put an order out to um uh what was it galaxy cardboard dios or whatnot diorama? So I, I I I messaged a guy, went to his eBay shop and picked up uh, the Naboo throne room. Um, diet cardboard diorama just because I want to shoot that with this. So I, nice. I need to get this. I want this. This is one I've been since hearing the rumors. I've been wanting this one. I think they chose the throne from the end of the Phantom Menace for this pop. The beginning has a different throne, slightly oh. different details. So this pop's not accurate. Oh, yeah, but they're both from the same movie. Yeah, <laughs> so it doesn't, it doesn't matter. No, I'm just saying. Just as long as she's not sitting in the Game of Thrones throne. That, that there you go. Cool. She was in the Iron Throne, and they were just like, you know, we got a shitload of these Iron Thrones. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. Nobody. I, don't know, I might like that crossover. <laughs> didn't someone? Didn't they make a pop of just the throne itself? Just the throne. Yeah. New York Comic Con. Yeah, they did. That would be actually. I kind of like that'd be kind of cool to have just, just the, the throne. throne. Yeah. But yeah, I, I this is one that I you know I wanted. I know you wanted it, Lex. I'm. I guarantee uh, Andrea is going to be getting this one from Padawan uh, Chronicles or not. So I, I, I really want to see this one come out. But was it sold out or just not available? Because I kept seeing not available. It says that, I mean, when I checked, it says pre-orders are sold out. Uh, is that, that's not a Target exclusive though. That's just a Pop Deluxe. Correct. Yeah, the only one that are Target yeah. exclusive are the four retros, but I think they're being sold out of Target, so maybe are you guys, the of... are you guys all in the U.S.? No, I am. No, just, no I'm not. Chris You're is the not, Canadian. Chris. All right, Chris, we'll hook you up. We got you because we'll. We, I mean, we'll, I, I, I don't want it. the retro ones anyway, so it's okay. <laughs> 
but I mean these these uh, yeah, yeah. on pre order, so we'll we'll get them. Yeah, I think I get you can if you can't get on Amazon, I do I do not think they sold out on Entertainment Earth. I think it was Canada. Yeah, they're they're not on GameStop uh, website like Canada anyways yet. I know they were on the US site, but they're not on the Canadian site yet. So yeah. We got you. Uh, we got you, Chris. And then we this also one's... got yeah. Tatooine disguise. Yes. I'm not gonna lie, I found this one a smidge boring. Yeah. I, I mean, but the pose the is boring, yeah. But it's if like, doing like she didn't really do too much anyway. So, what did she do in this outfit? <laughs> she walked around tattooing. She so it, it's right kind of, yeah. This was pretty much it. I so. would, if you're doing an um, Queen Amidala, like if you're sorry, if you're gonna do a Padme, then it should be. You know, I don't want to redo handmade. I don't want to redo the, the Emerald the City Comic Con one or wherever I have it. Oh, the Geonosis uh, one. But I don't know. Just this to me was just eh, like a man. Eh. It's okay. It's yeah, okay. I, I mean, think I'll be honest. I think the hair and the sculpt is going to be phenomenal on it because I can already tell by the braids in the front and connection probably to the back. They're going to do a great job because the Vel the Vel Sartha. The Andor one they did, that hair yeah. is, is one of the best of all the Star Wars sculpts I've seen. It, it was very nicely done. And so I was like, mm. I know they're going to give the detail here because they did it to the Leia um, Yavin where she's giving out the medal. They did it to the young yeah. Leia. A lot, a lot of the so recent ones. In that, in yeah. that form. It will be yeah. nice looking. But, you know, Lex and I just said, like, I think the Handmaiden with the kind of orange kind of gradient to the pink or yellow that would have been more iconic and more. Yeah. Oh, I think there'd be more of a want for it because the color attracts. Yeah. Like it just it pops, you know, yeah, pun I, don't know. I mean, she was in this outfit for, from the majority of the movie though. Oh, yeah. I was going to say when I think of Padme and like Phantom Menace, if it's not like Queen Amidala's outfit, it's yeah. this one. Like, I think this is yeah. the most iconic to me. Is it a little yeah. boring? Yeah, but it's really kind of like nostalgic. I think the Handmaiden one yeah. would have been really cool as well. But I think for a lot of people, when you think of her in the first movie, it's in this. Outfit, I agree. You know, yeah. so I get it. I mean, it's definitely a little boring, but it's going to be the third think. Padme pop we get. Yeah. So I'm excited that we're just getting more. But but, but I mean, yeah. and again, like the, the boring pose, like she didn't do any she wasn't holding a blaster. Like you couldn't pose her with a blaster. Yeah. It wouldn't make sense. Yeah. Same with the orange hat and maiden dress. Like it would be cool, but she didn't hold a blaster. She wasn't fighting anyone. Like they, they could do the one at, at the end, like the, the yeah, disguise the the decoy one where she had like, yeah. Yeah. And you could have posed her differently, but she's got that little, the boring pose gun. suits her. Yeah. It is a boring pose, but it does suit it. Yeah. It makes sense to me. I'll probably yeah. try to get this one. I got yeah. this. I put this on the list. <laughs> cool. And then we have a Padawan Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah. However, I was really Finally. excited about this one, and then they dropped the retro one, and I almost no, it's not almost. I do like the retro one better. Mm. So you're gonna get the retro I, one. I like the retro then? better only because I love the retro. Like I feel like the accents of the colors, it's a, the <laughs> same exact pop. Like yeah. But I don't know. I feel like the retro one is like. Just I, I'm excited for the photograph, the retro, because I just love being able to kind of manipulate the background so they kind of look like a, a, a half tones, you know. So I'll take them, throw them through the yeah. comic, comic life app, and I'll make a, the background image I'm going to put on my monitor a half tone scale so it looks like a comic book. And then throwing these guys in it, it's like, it's just, it's, it's awesome looking. So I'm, I'm excited. But this is one we've all been wanting an Obi Wan from this era, so very yeah. pumped to get. I mean, especially since the only one that we have is a part of that Duel of Fates set. So now we'll yeah, be able to... yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we'll have like a standalone, which I think is really cool. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I don't know. I think this one's like cooler. I do like that one more. I like. I do like the retro one a little bit more. Yeah. I don't know, just something about like the subtleties of like you know, even in his hair. You got the highlight shadow kind of the little marks pull it out. It's it's really slick how they do. It. I love this. This is a way cooler idea that they've done. 
definitely. They should have just w- started the retro like from the beginning and done these uh, accents from the. Well, beginning. you know what? I, 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 I now this is forcing me to have to do because the very first segment of my YouTube show that I was going to do any of my videos, I I never post. It. I worked on this whole thing and never post it. And I was telling you, it's about how Star Wars got saved or Star Wars saved Marvel. And it's very interesting because they went, Marvel uh, was approached and Stan Lee and the rest of the the cronies there kind of laughed at the gentleman who was representing Lucasfilm for this deal, laughed him out of the room. A couple of weeks later, Star Wars, the biggest box office ever. And guess who had all the negotiating chips when they went back to the bargaining table? Yeah. And not yeah. only that, but yeah. when I when I do the segment, check it out because it'll it, it tells you how Star Wars and the franchise pulled Marvel out where they were basically bankrupt and basically bankrolled them for the future. And in the few short months they started doing the star Wars stuff. So I thought that was cool. Yeah. The one that I like kind of on the fence about though, is this one. Cause we already do have two young Anakin's. We have one without a helmet and then one with the pod racing helmet. And I have the pod racing helmet but in yeah. the Scarlet Joker thing that they posted, they said pod racing helmet. And I was like, wait, that makes no sense because yeah. we yeah. already have one. And this definitely looks like the helmet he's wearing when he's in the N1. It 100% yeah, is. It is. I have the N1. Yeah. So, the, the hyperspace. It's the same thing. Um, I still ordered it because I like it. I like it. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it. it. It looks really detailed, like especially the fabric. It, it looks... I mean, like the, they're getting the fabric cool. textures really nice. I would like to I'll recommend because I don't have the I, oh Anakin, sorry a young Anakin pop. You hear me? Yeah, a pop deluxe, a real one, not bullshit like four inch in a giant box. <laughs> but young young Anakin on Tatooine, standing in, outside of his house, where the f- shadow behind him is Darth Vader on the house from the post. That would be awesome. If you yeah, did speaking that, in my language, I feel like that would have been perfect. Like, in, like a movie oh. poster, like yes. do that as the movie poster. Yeah, you know, just that like they did the, the deluxe one. I've been wanting to do the whole deluxe, like how they did that. I wanted them to do that as a whole pop, where it's not just Leia, but Leia, Luke, and the Vader helmet in the background is all done somehow dimensionally as Funko Pop style. Yeah. Like you do your t-shirts and all that. Do that as a giant poster. Uh, I mean, I have the poster one from the first one, but like it lacks. It, even the pop and you get, you know, a six inch version of Luke, which is kind of odd. It's not the fourth, not ten, so it's six. Yeah. And you have R2 there that's scaled to that one. But yet it doesn't it doesn't all follow the rest of the poster. And then you get the deluxe and the NFT, and that looked really cool. And you, the idea of Young Anakin with the shadow of Vader on the building. Yeah. Take our money. Yeah. That's awesome. That's an awesome idea. I'm telling you. Yeah, I would kill for that. It would be, it would be if you did a uh because they've done you're right, the Star Wars movie poster um with New Hope. If you yeah. did Phantom yeah. Menace and that was the figure inside, hotcakes. So oh. like hotcakes. Oh, you wouldn't be able to keep them on the shelf. That would sell. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't even. It wouldn't even go on sale. There, there would be yeah. no. It would actually. It would probably go up in value because so many people would want it. That would be absolutely yeah. sick. Yeah. I don't know. Watch them do it now, and I don't get any credit. <laughs> I mean, as long as we but, get the pop, though, they can take all my ideas. I feel like just send me <laughs> one in the mail. Concept artist, you know. Yeah. That do the I'll take a free Funko Pop. Like, yeah, send me one for free. Okay, and yeah. then uh, Roger, Roger, we're getting a battle droid. Yes. Noise. Yes. Finally, now we can Finally. have people start building some Funko armies. You know, I already and I already pre-ordered <laughs> two of these. So and I, I, I heard I, I heard these sold out already at a bunch of places. Yeah, I did one buying a bunch of them in their army Amazon building and one through Target. Yeah, the pre-orders are sold me. out at Target. Yeah. If people would do the multiples just to build a droid army, yeah. Or yeah. I mean, they do I, it I with like them. to repaint them and to have a different, different looking one, like the one with the yellow 
markings on them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should almost like take the head off of one and then like put like the unfinished C3PO <laughs> head on top on of it. it. <laughs> that would have yeah. been like a cool yeah. chase, but that I know it's been cool. like clones. That so would have been maybe a cool for their thing. anniversary. That could be like a two pack or something. Well, now yeah. they finally have this, Lex. They, they're going to easily do it. They're like, that girl had a really great idea. Just take this body, grab that head, throw it on. Done. I mean, it even yeah. opens a door for, like, a droidica or the super battle droid. Like, there's just yeah. so super many options droid, now. Droid. And I think the droidica would be crazy because they are doing a Lego one, um, like a Lego set for May 1st. Yeah. So, I don't know. Because I feel like that's and an And a iconic, Black Series like, one, too. They're doing a yeah, Black Series Droidica Black series as well. Yeah. So, come on, Funko. I know we're getting a battle droid. We need a little bit more. Yeah, I'm surprised yeah. we didn't get a, a, a chaser and exclusive where, where it's got the yellow markings on one of them. Like, I, I, yeah. I feel so, that I might be speaking too soon, but it's bound to happen because it's it's yeah. too easy to pour gasoline to make money on. I was going to say, like, because usually they, they do, like, three exclusive pops, exclusive to, like, Entertainment Earth or GameStop, whatever. And we haven't gotten any exclusive, exclusives with this wave, so maybe they're going to reveal those in the next week or so maybe well, they'll probably the, be the retro ones considered more. target exclusive i yeah. mean yeah but yeah, they are like, target exclusive. like the um like the ahsoka waves for example you got the oh yeah sabine was the amazon the exclusive. captain captain enoch was an entertainment earth exclusive with the second wave mm -hmm. sabine was an amazon exclusive with the first wave um what else the was it yeah, the, the clone trooper the was a Funko Shop fun? exclusive? Yeah, that was a hot topic exclusive. Hot topic, or, right? Uh, so box lunch. Yeah, maybe? we had other characters as exclusives, right? So I bet you I'm we'll hoping, see Funko, fingers crossed, a Funko Shop exclusive at least from Phantom Menace. Yeah, hasn't and been an probably an Entertainment Earth one too. I would think. Yeah, probably. they do a lot. Yeah, yeah, I'm hoping for a Boss Ness. Yeah, yeah see, I was hoping for the Captain Tarpole riding the thing as a deluxe, kind of like you had uh, Obi Wan in the Opie. Oh I'd yeah, like yeah, that. that'd, that'd be, be cool. cool. Yeah, cool. or finally get a Qui Gon with the poncho. Yes, I, how I, easy would that be? You need to have something to go with the mall. That obviously, it's about. too difficult because yeah. they just won't do it. Yeah, the, uh, even though even though they did the uh, yeah they did the Amazon exclusive uh, Qui Gon. Tatooine one, and he's he's the, the base Clearly is like Jedi Naboo or something, Jedi Temple or something, and uh, he's not wearing the poncho, so he they labeled it wrong. I don't know. That irritates me. <laughs> I, I, with all the success they've been doing the two packs, why couldn't you do a, a Maul first Qui Gon two pack? Make it a GameStop yeah. exclusive because they've been killing it with them. I mean, yeah. I just picked yeah. up my uh, Jar Jar versus Grievous one. That's a good one. Those are phenomenal. They really look great. Yeah. The one that I don't like, though, is this one. Uh, I agree, Lex. Yeah, this, I mean, out of all of them, this is by far the most underwhelming in week one, considering it's the same one as the 2019 celebration, it's minus so he just has like a fist. It's literally yeah. the same. Yeah, it's 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 lazy. Yeah, I've been yeah. looking at this one, trying to figure out. I thought maybe he was holding the chance dice in his hand in a way would have been kind of a way for me to want to even get it. But there's not enough difference. Like his eye, no. I was wondering if it's less. It's, if one is more squinty than the other, and I'm like, mm, it's, no. They, no. It's literally they, they just took it. They, the yeah, yeah, the stance and the hand. He's yeah, holding something in his in the first one. Yeah, and, and I think yeah. the legs are swapped. The legs are swapped. Yeah, I think the legs are swapped. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So this is only what I'm passing on. Yeah, I definitely I did a hard pass on that yesterday with my wallet. Yeah. Yeah. That one was a sad one. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna show them. That, you know, if, I'm not just gonna be a completionist to complete them because I have that. No, I'm gonna buy the yeah. ones. And when you do something so yeah. freaking lazy like this, like this. And again, when you do something like this, it, it diminishes from having the really cool exclusive from the year, two years before. You know, yes. like, it's awful. Yeah, it's but, terrible. Yeah. And this is a huge anniversary, so way lame, way lame. Yeah. Um, and then the last piece of news that we got is another, well, it's I guess it's not news, but it's like a leak of some Ahsoka pops. So there's an Ahsoka Tano 
Anakin Skywalker. A Sabine Wren and Ezra Bridger. I have a theory on this. I love that. Okay. I think this is going to be a GameStop blue saber series. Like they had the red saber series, wave one, series one. This is going to be series two, and it's going to be called the blue blade series. But Ahsoka Sabine doesn't have a Sabine's not blue either. But they're good guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Hey, I, I know that. You all know that. But the people who obviously do the marketing don't know the do don't know you know Star Wars I mean, at the time. So they're probably gonna. I, I'm, I'm saying it's probably gonna be the Blue Blade series, and they're gonna be in there. I don't know. I think this, this it, is where we need. He, this is where we need a clip of Luke tossing his lightsaber because that's uh, Patrick tossing his theory out the window now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that was all the news that we got yeah so a lot of a lot excitement of and you know lot, what like a lot. scarlet joker and funko info they're pretty reliable when it comes to these leaks and rumors and stuff so i would say so Monkey Pops they've been high. very consistent very consistent it's my birthday i mean it day. takes happy a while to get hey, Monkey Pops Pops for some of birthday. it's my son's birthday today happy, yeah, happy birthday. birthday happy birthday to patrick jr then yeah, he's the, third. he's the third. He's the third. Peck I'm the third. third. I'm junior. He's the third. If we get another Ahsoka the White, I wouldn't complain. Yeah, I wouldn't complain either. Really. You can take my money. It. Her using the force yeah. talking to the Purgle. Something. <clears throat> can we just pause and talk about, like, briefly, that how Rosario Dawson was one of the most perfect casting as an adult Ahsoka that I've ever seen in my entire life? Like, sometimes... When people are cast, you're like, mm. but I remember it reminded me of when they were talking about the solo prequel. And I said, if they get anybody but um, Donald Glover as Lando, yes, uh, I would be, I would be pissed off. And sure enough, I see the first trailer and it's, it's, it's Donald Glover. And I'm like, you couldn't have oh, nailed yeah. that better. And when um, they were saying that Ahsoka was going to get a live action series and I saw Rosario Dawson, I'm like, she couldn't, you couldn't have nailed taking Clone Wars Ahsoka into human form better than with Rosario Dawson. I I couldn't even name an actress alive that would have played that better. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. She physically just, she's Ahsoka. It's amazing. And it just, and, it just and all, at that right age to where yeah. Ahsoka is where we are in the stories at this yeah. point. Because she is older now. It's not, you know, so it just all the cards kind of fell in alignment for that. So I agree. Yeah, I was really yeah. impressed. Yeah, and, and I know some people have complained about Rosario being kind of dry in her performance as Ahsoka, but she's an older Ahsoka now. She's not as like She's a little she's bitter. She's get him. Like she's bitter, yeah. Adam right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. So but at the her. end, when she turns to Ahsoka the White, she I feel like goes back and gets more in yeah. touch with yeah, that, absolutely like, go lucky, carefree. But I think you know it's tough if you haven't watched the Clone Wars and all that stuff to see what's happened that's led up to her being, yeah. you know, Ahsoka the Grey. But I am a huge Ahsoka fan, and I thought Rosario did a phenomenal job, you know, carrying on the legacy that Ashley Eckstein, like, started. So. Even that young actress yeah. that played her in the flashbacks. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, did a phenomenal, phenomenal job, because yeah. it she yeah. made me feel that I was watching Ashley Eckstein's portrayal. I almost forgot, you know, the voice difference, right? I just had the suspension yeah. of disbelief went out the window with that. I was hook, line, and sinker, and watching her it was the empathy she had for the clones as they were di- dying on these like gurneys and stuff. That's the old Ahsoka that we knew from the animation that we that drew me into this character even more so. I was like, th- they just nailed it. it. It was the story, and I think the lore that we all know and love and you know live and breathe. When you see it come to life in your live action, you're just like, oh my, oh, oh it's that. You know, you're you know, every other moment's a a meme. You know, of Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio going. Hey, you know, snapping and pointing at the TV screen. So I, I just thought they nailed it. They, they yeah. killing it, killing also it. Also, with the actress that voiced um, Bo-Katan in Clone Wars, and actually using Katie Sackoff. Am I wrong there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
using yes. her as the live action, she looked like Bo Katan, and then she was yeah. obviously the voice. So you get that recall in your head. Um, and I know they did that with Thrawn too. The guy that voiced Thrawn in Rebels was the Lord. actor. In yeah. So yeah. Yeah. But like that's just awesome. <laughs> it's just such a bonus when you're a fan of something else and they do it and then they've kept this person and you hear the voice yeah. and you see the person and you're like this is Bo Katan. So I, I'm really it I'm works both they ways. Like because they, they did it did it like you said, Bo Katan and Thrawn, they, they kept the same actor, but yeah. If they did Ashley Eckstein as Ahsoka live action, I don't no, know if it would have been yeah, as good as yeah. Rosario. It so look like they, Ahsoka. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they they, they did also, it both ways. Guys, so. a question for you guys: When you guys watch Tales of the Empire, is it me? I, I I I'm not sure if I'm hearing it, but the Grand Inquisitor is that not the Grand Inquisitor from Rebels, the voice actor, and not the live action guy from Kenobi. I think series. it's the same one from yeah, no, it, it's, it's, it's Jason Isaacs. Yeah. It's like yeah. Patriot and, yeah, and it is. brothers, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, all right, because I thought it was him, because as soon as I heard the voice, I'm like, oh, I'm hoping they keep, I, I like that guy's voice, and I would have rather seen him go live action than who we had in Kenobi, personally, for the Grand Inquisitor. I, I just think yeah, that, I don't, I don't like that. I think he's twice the twice the actor of what we got for Kenobi, and I know the actor it could be that that like yeah. that guy because a lot of voice actors, some of them only do voice, and they probably don't, you know, physically would pull off the look. I mean, look at D. Bradley Baker; he's a phenomenal voice actor, but I think if you were to put him on as like on screen, he wouldn't match what the clones look like. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. yeah. I, I think the Grand Inquisitor they they did all that makeup in uh, the prequels on Utapal. That's the same kind of being that they're talking Obi Wan's talking to at the time about you know, like pointing at, basically diamond out Grievous. He was yeah. that same kind of creature and his yeah. face kind of same creature and the lines in it. Yeah, same whatever species. race species race. Thank you. Species, yeah. Uh, so I, I think they could, but I would have re much rather have the actor who was the bad guy in the Patriot live action Grand Inquisitor than who we got. This is, yeah, my, my I, I think that the smaller head on the Grand Inquisitor was probably, I mean, he didn't really do any stunts, so I was gonna say it's the same as like how they shortened Ahsoka's head tails and stuff on, on the live action, but yeah, the Grand Inquisitor didn't really do any stunts or anything, but I don't know. There goes my thing. He didn't do any. He, he didn't really do any impaling or anything. Yeah. Oh, well, he didn't know yeah. one person. But that person just lives anyway. So who cares if you? Yeah. Play? You know she can. But, just keep uh, we did have uh, a couple episodes of the uh, the Bad Batch. So uh, we'll do our we'll, like we'll do it like we did our our last two for there where we did the top five from both episodes because Lex, you only saw one episode. And yeah, Fish a bad Star Wars is fan. behind, so I'm behind. <laughs> He's behind. Which I'm a okay. slow we'll learner. <laughs> a slow learner. I mean, yeah, but we'll, we'll go through our top five here. Um, so, Fish, I don't know if you want to hang around for the top five, or if you want to, yeah. <laughs> I mean, or are we, we're gonna be bringing uh, it up on. Are you guys going to be wrapping it up after your top five? Yeah, after this. So yeah, if if, if it, yeah. yeah, after we do the top five. So I mean, if you want to take off, we appreciate you hopping in and joining us and Thank talking you guys the so uh, much for Phantom Menace me. pops. Really Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we well, we always yeah we we love having you on. You're you're clearly a sucker for torture because you came on <laughs> a third time and but we we appreciate your your expert your expertise and your insight. Uh, into the, the world of Funko, and we will definitely have you on again, my friend. I really appreciate Absolutely. it, guys, very much. And keep your show going on because it's just enjoyable, and we love watching it. So we, it's it's fun to We're fun to see you real. guys and watch you, and then be able to talk to you about it too in person. So it's always fun. Oh, thanks. Yeah, uh, let let people who are watching know one more time where they can uh, they can find you if they don't know who you are already. Thanks to Mikey too. Appreciate that. Um, 
We are on uh, YouTube at K Dog and Fish, just like I have it sp uh, spelt under my name there. Um, and on Instagram, we do a lot of live shows on Instagram. Uh, one weekly, we call Four O'clock Friday. Um, host live Funko auctions, um, and then our YouTube show. We really we do have a podcast on uh, Spotify and iTunes, but we've been focusing more on YouTube lately with three shows a week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And really talking mostly about Funko, but we do like to talk about uh, other pop culture, entertainment, even sports. We're both big sports guys, and we're trying to find a way to incorporate that. So we created this new show called What's Poppin', and it's the Funko news for that week. We air it every Saturday morning. Uh, Funko news entertainment and then sports all in one longer show and um it's been going really well so we're we're at episode 23 that we posted this morning and uh just yeah and we have a store in canada in uh, two hours north of toronto in an area called muskoka which is tourist cottage country um for the rich toronto people we can't live in cottages by the lake that's why i live in town with my toys <laughs> and, um, but, uh, our store's downtown and, uh, we have a lot of fun. K-Dog is awesome and hilarious and, uh, I appreciate you guys having me and it, it was a lot of fun. Nice to meet Very Lex nice. as yeah. well. Nice to meet you too. Appreciate it. I'm very impressed. Very impressed with your knowledge at your Padawan age. Thank you. I try my best. <laughs> she's, the, she's the one blowing up, fish. She's going to be the one more famous than all of us. Yeah. Me. He is <laughs> he's on track to be like the next Star Wars theory, female version of it. Right? There you go. Like Ooh, race side. Go. I think race side is going, this is going to be the next female kind of race side. Now, honestly, she's climbing yeah. the numbers. The, the fans, the people in the chat are always commenting to her. They really love, love her and her, her demeanor. She's, she's been a great, a great asset and, addition to our podcast so what is your yeah, uh do you have a youtube channel lex yeah i think it's jedi.lex or it's jedi underscore lex <laughs> i forget which is which because yeah. can't get it on the same platform it sucks yeah oh but uh, all of their all of their links will be in the description below for anyone looking to follow any of us so uh thanks again it. fish for coming on I'm going to stop appreciate right it. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. I'm so glad. All right. So, came. I know, right? He's and he, so, he brings so much so to the table, too. He's so knowledgeable. He's fun. Yeah. He's a whole package. Really. But you know what's interesting? Getting it from him is different than the three of us because. He actually deals with Funko in another way that no one would yeah. normally deal with. Like he's not going to the store exactly. and just picking up a box. He's the guy that gets him to the store. He has his own store. Yeah. So it's a really cool perspective coming from him and uh, K Dog. Yeah. But uh, yeah, let's jump into our top five. Let's go over our top five from our last two or pre the newest two episodes of the Bad Batch. Magnificent, aren't they? And yeah, so we, we'll scroll through this one. So we all saw this first one, episode 10. Um, <clears throat> I thought... You go first this time, Chris, because Lex yeah, and I have gone yeah. the, first, the first few. I thought uh, Dr. Carr deserves uh, a Funko Pop. I mean, we, we've gotten her... Right. Well, I mean, she was pretty prominent in both of these episodes, but definitely it's her. Season more. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah. Um, and then when we got to the uh, the vault, you got these alien kids. That was a adorable. surprise. That I was wasn't surprise. expecting that. I wasn't expecting kids. But um, yeah, no, the the one this one, mm -hmm. I can't remember her name, but she looks like uh, Eva? Sassy Tin. Evelyn? Was yeah, it Eva or something? E. I think it's Eva. Maybe Evan. Evan That'd be a cool one. I I doubt we're gonna get it, but I I would like to see it as a. Uh, as a Funko oh. Pop. The I also next like one. that little kid. I was going to say, I love yeah. the mother on that one. That was sad. That was really that was, sad. 
It was, but I would but, love um, to have her carrying her little child would be a cute little one. That would just make uh, Yeah, I was gonna say just, total 360. A full a full a full size pop of him, not not because we, we got him with uh Cad Bane from yes. the first season, but just give give us his own pop. Yeah, that's a I good call. I wouldn't have need. thought of that. Yeah. So there was that one. And then Tarkin. Oh, actually, no. The again, the C, the what is it? CX or whatever the clones are called. CX, X or whatever his name CX is. Clone. Yeah, yeah. Because they're just really cool looking, right? He is yeah, cool looking. Yeah, and he shows up in the the next episode as well. Um, and then yeah, Tarkin would be my next pick. We need an updated. Uh, yeah, like a Tarkin Clone Wars pop. animated style. A Clone Wars movie. animated one? Yeah. That would with look kind of nice. Hair? Where is he? I was going to so, say, the, with his cheekbones, kind of how they did like the Thrawn one. There we go. You know? That would look good. Yeah. Yeah. Like, pointy right? hair, like they did with uh, yeah. Dooku. You combine like yeah. the Thrawn. It's, a, it's and, a different style, right? It is. Yeah. But uh, Lex, do you want to go next? Sure. I mean, I only watched this episode. I do really need to watch the other one. I've been trying to avoid spoilers, but I liked all the kids. Well, we, we won't scroll through that one. Yeah, we won't okay. scroll through that one. Yeah, the I kids mean, were I adorable. I the kids. I thought uh, Eva was cute. This green guy. I saw people were comparing him to the green beans guy. That's yeah. not the, the <laughs> but, I mean, I thought he was cool looking. I liked the little one that Cad Bane took, him and his mom. I mean, we've I thought Cad Bane was pretty cool because he's in like a different outfit. I think. Is he, I think it looks like the Clone Wars or the one where he was in Bad Batch. He's Maybe got it's the same outfit. Off. It like looked different than what I've like seen, but I don't know. And it was good getting some Cad Bane again, though. It was. They actually called out the uh, Scorch by name in this episode. They did. did yeah, that I noticed time? that too. Yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah. oh, they actually called him. I mean, I, I think he's just not wearing his trench coat or whatever. I think that maybe that's it. But it's, yeah, it is a different look for him. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe those five, but I don't know. I mean, other than the kids, it's not in Cad Bane, but he's not really a new character. We've seen him before, but I guess new yeah. for the season. But the kids, yeah. I think, other than the other ones that we've seen, those are the only real new introductions that we've gotten. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean we've seen Doctor Carr throughout the other episodes too, so it's uh, it's not easy picking top fives for every episode because sometimes it's just like the same characters over and over again. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Patrick, what about yourself? If I'm going with this, um, it would definitely be um, the little rabbit-looking creature with her child. Right, the one that I, got I, abducted I, there. Yeah, I honestly would like to see her holding the child. I just think that. Because she's not a real major character necessarily, but like she's a part, she's a plot point to the story. So like, yeah, I just, I, like that's I, adorable. I just love the creature. I just yeah. love the creature, and get, yeah. you know, and I'm not a flocked fan, but I'd like this one flocked. I think it would. There's something yeah. about the tactile and the and the look of this would look really nice with some flock. Yeah, yeah I think that it would be a great looking pop. Um. I, I didn't mind the kids, but I definitely would say the female doctor and with the red like red lenses, you know, I think it would look kind of nice yeah. in the pop of her. Um, I I thought it was funny Dr. that you were Dr. saying the Jolly Green Giants kid sprout because that's exactly what I was thinking when I saw. That's this. what he looks like. He does. I mean, yeah, he does. I I, I was thinking um, of doing maybe not one of these guys, but Tarkin would be one for sure, and a Hemlock. So I guess between that little creature, Hemlock, Tarkin, and that, I mean, I think I've obviously that special trooper too. You know, I'd love to see that. I'd really like to yeah. see that done in a way where because when you see it in the in the animation, it looks like the seams kind of I don't know if they're fluorescent or they glow. There's just something that kind of pops about his little design. And it just yeah. I think design wise, I think that would make an excellent looking pop. Yeah, because I love all the helmets for all the clones and the Bad Batch. Those the styles are so great. So to see that all black and then those little kind of fluorescent yellow or green highlights to do that, take my money. Yeah, it's gonna look great. 
But that that's yeah. what I would go for my top five on these. I mean, we're we're coming to the end here. We're, and I'm kind of glad we're not getting introduced yeah. to too, so many yeah. new new characters at this point. Yeah, because really, like, I'm I'm very doubtful we're getting any bad batch pops just with. With the Phantom Menace ones coming out, and then the next big thing I would think is going to be the Acolyte. I'd yeah. be surprised if we get any Bad Batch pops, but we can. We can. That's why we do this. We we we're we're, we're hoping and wishing that we're getting these pops, but I, I, maybe, I don't maybe know. somebody will see it. And I'd love yeah, to. I'm also I'm hoping that the, I'm yeah. hoping that the next Haslab is going to be the Marauder, only be because cool. you know. It would be it would be kind of cool, and I after just ordering the Razor Crest, they destroyed that in, in the series. So I don't know. That was that was kind of interesting to see the Marauder go. So I, I'd like to see uh, some more stuff like going that direction. The series is getting yeah. darker, guys. Like it, it's just oh, not it's it's not getting it's been dark to begin with. But it's yeah. It, but I mean, we're three like, we're three weeks away from the end. Yeah, we got like three episode. more. Yeah, four more episodes. So, yeah. It, but I feel that we're not just seeing how it affects the, our normal characters. It's affecting all those like Chef and all those other characters yeah. on Pabu. And and it's just, it's really kind of what you're starting to see the spread of the empire and, and the destruction. And it's yeah. pretty crazy. And then we're going to lead in the Tales of the Empire with some some story and thread lines. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm very excited for what we got coming up next. I mean, yeah, definitely we, it's year of the dark side, if you ask me. Between the grim the grim tales happening here in Bad Batch, acolytes dark side perspective, tales of the Empire. I mean, is should we should we all be buying like Revan helmets and and red lightsabers coming up? I mean, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, but uh, overall, I mean, it's it's uh, it's gonna be a dark end i think i think a lot of characters like the i think the main like clone force 99 i don't think they're going to make it out alive i don't think no. so yeah, yeah i definitely don't so. think so yeah but i mean yeah no the tough to pick because like even in the next episode there weren't too many new characters like uh, there weren't really any new characters other than like what we've seen before fishermen's yeah so, but yeah, that I think that'll do it for this episode, though. Um, Patrick, where where can people find you, my friend, when uh, when you're not on here? Well, I'm on here with Lex and you and our special guest. Uh, I'm on my channel, Poptography, on YouTube, and you can find me on social media, Poptography YT. Um, this week we got some fun stuff. Uh, you, if you saw last week, I did a, a young Jedi adventures figures. Um, so I did mm -hmm. a little. I photographed the one, but then I did a little flip around because I wanted to focus on Tabor and really kind of make them look like you're seeing the scene kind of 360 or 180 rather. Um, so I've got that coming out this week. I've got an exciting new image coming out this week and a piece of bonus content. So if you stay out and you do watch the new image and you get to the end of it, there's a great little tutorial at the end because the toy photography collective, uh, a bunch of us got together and said, Oh, let's create uh, a tutorial because there's so many ways to get, achieve the same effect. So I did a tutorial that's coming out also as its own clip. So I've cut it out and separated it and isolated it to be its own clip. How to do the lightsaber effect in Photoshop coming out this week. Nice. So nice. that'll be something that I think a lot of people would like. And I did it very, very easy. Like I broke it down. This is something I learned when I first was getting on the YouTube and trying to figure out things like that myself, like, you know, I know Photoshop, but I, I've never done a lightsaber. Like, I don't know, what would I start with? Do I do outer glow, inner glow? So this is a really great kind of almost every way I can do it. This is one of the easiest ways. And I break it down step by step. So yeah, um, definitely take a look at it. But enough about me and photographing Funko Pops. Lex, where can people find you? When you're not hanging out with me and Chris talking all things Funko Pop. Well, when I'm not here with you two guys and any guests that we have on, I'm on my own channel, which is Jedi Lex. It's either Jedi.Lex or underscore at TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, X. And I kind of just do everything and all things Star Wars conventions, reaction videos, unboxings, try to keep it light and fresh, do some Funko Pop news here and there. But Chris, when you're not here with me and Patrick, where can people find you? 
Well, when I'm not on here with uh, you two fine people, I am on my own channel, Seriously Star Wars, doing weekly Star Wars videos, Funko Pop reviews, and the uh, Star Wars fan battle every Saturday at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern. So check that out. But uh, thank you, everyone, for watching and everyone in the chat for uh, giving us your your insight. And Absolutely. thanks again thank to Fish from K-Dog and Fish for coming on and, and chatting with us again. And happy um, birthday and, to Monkey Pop. Quick, yeah. quick happy birthday shout out. And uh, <laughs> thank you for everyone listening on uh, Spotify and, and Apple Music and everywhere you can find our podcast. And we will see everyone in the next episode.